Now, the gene is a resonance or frequency receptor. The gene is a translator of light and sound frequencies into information. Hello. Let me say that one more time. The gene is a translator of light and sound frequencies into information or atom. Informing atom. Informing. The informing of the sun. The sun informing. When you get information, you are forming light within you. That's what information is. Whatever you get in a sound, you process. And that process becomes you. That's what information is. The, the, the instructions form you. They, you form yourself from what you are given of the word. Why is that? Because the atmosphere has been terraformed in order to keep someone else comfortable, in order to feed someone else, in order to sustain someone else. Today, the fallen elders, or as they're called, I call them, the, uh, the, uh, the elders, uh, the, the dark elders, and I don't mean the dark elders like us, I'm talking about those who live in the, in, in the shadows of your awareness, inhabit a great portion of humanity's evolutionary envelope. These entities have walked into you. They have taken you all over. There's some of them, you walk down the street, you can see them right away. They don't even look like they're from here. They're walking around with a blank stare. They really look like they are not from this planet. You can pick them up. You know what the clones look like. We told you what they look like and, and what they're about. They have this glare, they have this blank stare. They, they, they deteriorate very quickly. But you remember that they inhabit, these entities inhabit a great portion of humanity's evolutionary envelope. Better yet, they occupy by intrusion based upon your ignorance of yourself. That's why people who have thoughts that are not their own, sometimes you wake up and say, damn, why did I think of that? I know, have you ever had one of them thoughts that came to you and wondered what we should, whew, where did I get that thought of murdering and uh, killing and somebody dead and mangled, somebody close and loving me? That's them trying to get in. That ain't you. And it's good that you could recognize it and not get caught up in it because there are some weak enough to get caught up in it. That's why the, the, they, these entities took over Hollywood because they don't have a way to physicalize themselves. So they live as a component of your dreams. You get pictures of alien and in that they live because you give life through your thoughts your all of the elements that go into creating a chemical memory gives you pictures gives you sounds give you words give you experiences and they live inside of that which you have provided them by the chemistry that is you so they actually create, wait, you try to find out, where do they get these kind of monsters? Who is the one who's designing these? They are working through those entities that they know are part of Hollywood. And they're there to make sure that they have places to live because when you go look at the movie and you see this and you, you're getting terrified, they live best with children because children have a greater impact. They have a greater impact on the memory chemistry of children. That's why you gotta be very careful about what you show your children at a very early age. Well, let's look at the lamp a little further and check out the story 
about a lamp. What was the most famous story about a lamp? Aladdin. Mm. All right, so something told me, who's Aladdin? How you spell Aladdin? A, A, L, L, A, freeze it. Oh, hold on. Hold on, yeah, okay. Allah, Deen. Okay, the word Deen, if you break down the word Din, not Jin, Jin, we know what the Jin is, but the word Din means dissonant sound. Okay? We know Allah. All right? But din is a dissonant sound. Now, if Allah is God, this person in the body of Allah din obviously has to be an aspect of God who speaks dissonant notes, who speaks or misinterprets the word. So what does he do in order to find himself, to get his wish? He rubs. So I said, well, let's look at the word rub. What do we do? What's rub mean? <laughs> Friction, rub a little with it. Yeah, this, this is rub, right? That's what you think rub means. Go ahead. To subject to the action of something that moves back and forth with friction and pressure. To cause to move along a surface with friction and pressure. To irritate, annoy. His laziness was being to rub me to move along a surface with friction and pressure, to shape, to chafe with friction, to cause irritation or annoyance, Keep going. informal, to continue in a given situation, usually with some difficulty. Hold that. Say that again. To, to continue in a given situation, usually with some difficulty. Go ahead. To admit rubbing, a blackboard that rubs clean easily, to be transferred by contact or proximity. Hold on. To be transferred by contact or proximity. Go ahead. Wish some of her luck with rub off. Wish some of her luck would rub off on me. Okay. Um, to harp on an unpleasant matter. Go ahead. To uh, to obliterate by or as if by rubbing, slang to kill, murder, rub up. To refresh one's knowledge of. Wait! Repeat that. To refresh one's knowledge of. Second to one. improve or increase the keenness application of friction and pressure. Um, you meant to to yeah. hop on? Yeah. Go ahead. To yeah. obliterate. Okay, Go keep going. To obliterate by or as if by rubbing. All to right. kill, right. murder, right. to refresh one's knowledge of. Okay, hold on. To refresh one's knowledge of. All right. The next one after that line was? To improve or increase the keenness of a mental faculty. Hold that right there. Thank you very much, brother. <laughs> to improve the keenness of mental faculty? Let's go back. Remember we said Aladdin, Allah, dissonant note coming from the word of God. He now has the lamp of God. He rubs it. What does he do then? He increases what? His keenness. Mental faculties. But remember now this is a lamp he's rubbing. And we know what lamp is now. The lamp is the sun. The lamp is the star. What is he rubbing? Okay. Now he says the word rub is to continue his given situation, sometimes with great difficulty, to refresh one's knowledge, to improve or increase the keenness of mental faculty. What comes out after that? Spell what? A genie? Oh, wait a minute now. Okay, so now the genie comes out of the lamp, which is the star, and grants him three wishes. 
Now, I know you're saying, well, where the fuck is he going with all of this? You think about how language has within it coded information. Now, who knew what rub meant except to rub? You know, your backside or your face or your hair or rub a little baby's bottom with some, some, uh, some cornstarch or something. Who the hell thought it meant, you know, getting into your consciousness, acuity, and what, rub? To exercise the keenness of mental faculty? I want to rub my brain. I want to rub myself with some words. The genie comes out, which is the gene, which is the code for the body. So Allah, din, or the dissonant code, rubs the lamp, which is the light, which is the sun, which is the internal dynamic of light, and then comes out with what? The genie. And the genie gives you three wishes. You, it is said in, what do you call it, in, um, in Sanskrit, that you live, you come back seven times, three. Three cycles of seven times to grant your wish in the flesh. And all of it is hidden. The geneticists are now in possession of the lamp. Or at least have knowledge of how the lamp works. To release the genie. To get the gene E to do its wishes. The lamp or star within us is in the cell nucleus, which contains the chromosomes or light bearers, the light fixtures, the Lucifer matrix within you. Lucifer is the lamp. Lucifer is the wick and it is the flame. The morning star, the light bringer, the thing that illuminates the mind and the soul. The gene, listen carefully now, the gene occupies the fixed location on the chromosome and has a specific influence. The geneticist occupies a fixed position. Hear me now. The geneticist occupies a fixed position in the hierarchy of the fallen lords and is now in charge of creating and producing specific influences in today's humanity. Let me go back and get that to you one more time. The gene, as it was said before, Hmm? occupies a fixed location on the chromosome and has a specific influence. The geneticist or the new gnostic occupies a fixed position in the hierarchy of the fallen elders and is now in charge of creating and producing specific influences in today's humanity. Based on the condition of our planet, it would appear that nothing or no one can be saved. And this is what they are telling you, that without them, you cannot be saved without the operation, without gene therapy, without the drugs, without all of this that they're doing. They're terraforming your bloodstream. They're damming it up just like they would dam any flowing river so that they could change the dynamic flow of the river and get your hydroelectricity from it. Well, what they're doing is they're damming your bloodstream with all kind of shit. And from that particular dam, they're extracting all kinds of perverted forms of electrical impulses that come out as your behavior. So the core of our universe, the core of our galaxy, gives off a specific consciousness intent. Follow me now. It gives off a specific consciousness intent of higher universal mind. That intent becomes synthesized as creation. That creation through suns, and I told you in the last time, a sun is the youngest form of life in the cosmos. And that sun, as it begins to peek through, it then becomes a relay station of consciousness throughout the whole galaxy. And it relays light from the core, what the Mayans called the Hunab Ku. The Hunab Ku holds the instructions for your consciousness time zone. I am taking you out of your linear, your, your, your blinders, and having you see three-dimensionally now who you are. All of the elements that's in your body, you don't need to be getting from food. The sun creates the elements based upon what you breathe because the breath is the breath of life. You are the breath of life. But when you distort the atmosphere, when you distort the environment, you cannot be nurtured 
through your primary source. When you have distorted the light programming, this will interfere or distort the DNA's ability to determine individual hereditary characteristics or be manipulated to create freaks of nature. Our planet is being terraformed by different types of species who live in these kinds of environments. Because the atmosphere has been terraformed in order to keep someone else comfortable, in order to feed someone else, in order to sustain someone else. There once was a hydrogen halo surrounding our Earth that fed the higher frequencies of universal mind directly to our DNA pattern. It was a triangular harmonic that connected the sun's hydrogen harmonic and the Earth's hydrogen harmonic to that of the body's hydrogen harmonic. They're growing human bodies inside of sheep ovaries. <coughs> Ooh, Yaku is going, he's out of control. Yaku is out of control. And these are Christians. Nine times out of ten, most of these damn geneticists are Christians. Now, check this. The process of cross-genetic interspecies breeding, when introduced into humans, will create a disease called acromegaly. Now, acromegaly is the disease that Akhenaten had. Now, acromegaly changed him into a hermaphrodite. The work of the geneticist, the new gnostic, the process of cross-pollination causes all forms of deformity. And how does this happen? How does deformity become created? I'll okay, tell you, putting insects into human, insect genes into humans, putting all kind of animal things and cross-pollinating, doing all kind of crazy things out of your mind, disturbing the order. The bondage of this three-dimensional consciousness time zone, you about to lead your damn self out. They got to stop that journey. When the year 2020 comes, a good portion of humanity will have been gone through the fire. They will begin to see more clearly in 2020. But people don't know what the secret to that kind of melanin means. And it means that there are times when our people moving through consciousness as the true earth creatures that at times when we were in the sun or when we would think a certain emotional thought one of the chakras would tell us immediately where your thoughts were focused and you would vibrate that particular color in accordance with your emotions mm. That's because you were in tuned and your melanin was not disjointed and fragmented. It was connected directly to the interlacing conduits that connected directly to your nervous system. And that nervous system through its own conduits connected directly to the etheric body that you had, which is called the breath form, which you commonly call the soul. So your soul through the nerve estuaries and the electromagnetic wiring in your body connected you directly to your skin.
Mm. And the soul had its outward representation in the way that the molecules and the atoms formed you to imitate the triple blackness because from the blackness came the light but in order for the light to know itself it had to be housed back in the blackness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. so what happens now we don't understand what color is we don't understand the science of melanin what I call dark matter consciousness mm -hmm. and in thus doing it we do things unconsciously in the spirit that's why religion is such a, how do I say this, such a deep, intoxicating, and addicting substance to dark folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the number one place where they can defer and deter the consciousness of black people by setting up a structure to intercept the true spirit. And the one structure that intercepts the true spirit is religion. The dogma of religion are to take us away from actually interfacing with the true voice of God that will tell you the name of the creator. Because your DNA is linked to your melanin and your melanin to the pigments on your skin. And that's how you had all these different names for God. Not Jesus you didn't have these names like uh, Allah, you didn't have all these names. These names came and were fostered upon you because you had names like Unkulunkulu. Mm -hmm. That was the sound of the cosmic resonance of the drums mm -hmm. and the way the Most High spoke to you. So you spoke back the name that was given to you directly. You didn't need a second hand interpreter to give you a name for God. God already gave you its name wherever you were on the planet because the name that you called God where you were on this planet was the harmonic frequency necessary to keep the balance of the overall planet in place. Mm -hmm. So when this Caucasoid came around and began ripping up all of your religious sounds and your music and the way you spoke directly to the Creator, it ripped up and tore apart the planet so much now that it begins to wobble. The planet itself today wobbles because every one of us is calling out somebody named Jesus mm -hmm. who never existed. Never existed. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So you know that your 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 melanin can be used to keep you in the prison mm -hmm. because it's easily infected with illusion, mm -hmm. and that's why we must know ourselves from inside out. And if this is a chance for me to speak more deeply upon what it is we need to do, you know I'm going to actually do my best mm -hmm. to be here to speak on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Now, I need to read into the record for everyone some things that I put down very quickly for us to understand or understand around what this DNA situation is and what this whole concentration on genetics and you know what's going on with the genetics of disease and we found a gene for cancer and a gene for leukemia and a gene for that you can go down to Woolworths and find genes <laughs> there's genes in everything biological but he needs to do that he needs to think that he is in control because he is going to poison you with what he finds. He can't do anything good with what he finds. Mm -hmm. He needs to keep poisoning you because by your suffering and pathology he lives. Uh -huh. mm. That's know that the medical system does not exist by your health. It exists based on you yeah. being maintained within a pool of pathology. Mm -hmm. Correct. So his control, his science is to find out what may harm you so that he may stay in control. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There is no different, there is no upliftment in his science because he has completely extricated the principle of the deity of God within all of his science. You cannot find deity in any of his sciences. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it has to be satanic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the study of genetics, the study of medicine, uh, the study of all of the biologies that he has is a satanic study because he does not believe that a divine intelligence 
operates all things. Now, if, if I may ask you a question, if you would prefer just to go completely and I interject questions on the end, I'll try to do that. Good, but let me put this down because then the questions may have been answered by what I have put down here for you. So let me just get some rudimentary things down. Simply put, mm -hmm. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid makes RNA, ribonucleic acids, which in turn, ribonucleic acids makes proteins. Everybody knows what a protein kind of is. Proteins allow things that are called amino acids to be registered messengers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm talking about when it comes down to say for instance to the DNA helix. And we'll deal with the DNA helix like this. Because this is the simplest waveform that we can see. This is not, let me just say this first, DNA is not what you think it is. This is simply an abstract model by what science has done to simplify what it is. Okay, that's all it is. So when they show you this fancy model with all these little things all over it, that's a clinical model because they don't all look like this. DNA is simply a wave energy pattern crystallized into a gelatinous mold. Okay? And the reason why it seems like this is because we stuck. And I'm going to get into that. So DNA makes RNA, RNA makes pro proteins, and proteins allow the amino acids to be the registered messengers. Each amino acid is different and thus has a different geometric shape specific to its duty. So amino acids are little messengers that attach themselves along the DNA. And I'm doing it extremely simplistic because if you get in contact with this guy, he will start getting into the church of his own scientific churches. Huge uh, amount of gobbledygook that simply doesn't do anything because it's their own language. It's their own way of estranging you from what's going on inside of you. So, each amino is a microprocessor, a microprocessor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of light signature frequencies. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, when you eat, or when you breathe in, or when you drink water, or when you take in anything that's real food, the breaking down of substances, especially the stuff that you breathe, essentially comes from what your environment gives to you in the form of the breath. So as you breathe in or as you eat in, certain things become digested, not only in the lungs but in the stomach and everywhere around you. Even knowledge and the sitting and learning is a form of digestion, which creates a certain type of etheric amino acid. Mm -hmm. That is not yet detected by them. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay, so I already jumped you forward maybe 10 years to what they're going to discover somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you breathe in, your alveoli in your lungs acts as condensers and compressors of, of cosmic solar material that is in the air that you breathe. Now a lot of people say, well, it's in the air. How can I, I'm going to see it. Well, you can tell that air is a form of atmosphere or almost like a watery kind of atmosphere. If you were to put your hand outside a car, for instance, and you feel that resistance as you're moving through it, and you can do this, you feel it. This is something actually feeling against my hand. Well, you're like a fish in a bowl, but you are in a more refined atmosphere. You see? So in this atmosphere is a whole other universe. You're living in a, in, a, in a terrarium, an open terrarium or open aquarium mm -hmm. with a kind of water that's so refined that this is the way that you breathe. Like the fish breathes the deeper and more condensed form of this same thing, you see. Mm -hmm. So when you breathe, you breathe in what are called etheric materials, solar materials that condense to become your etheric amino acids. But the food you eat is a denser form of the same thing. So as you break down food, you break down food that essentially has signatures within them. The enzymes, the, the proteins, and the fats, and all the different types of glycerides, whatever it is that you have inside of that food, begins to break down to make certain proteins and sugars that begin to attach themselves 
along the DNA. Now this DNA has these little signatures here because through your body every day, through your body, there are waveforms, light waveforms that are constantly bombarding through your body, more refined, giving you information. And that information that's coming from the outside in the form of light and in the form of your emotions and the form of your thought processes and the form of the electrical magnetic energies in your nerves are passing through the DNA as well. Okay? Now, each amino is a microprocessor of light signature frequencies. It's an antenna for the reception of light codes. Now let me be very clear about that. Light codes are essentially coming from the sun, but it's also coming from all of what you call stars. Uh, coming from constellations, the twelve of course you know being the zodiac. Each zodiac has a specific space wherein this world spins. There are 12 of them around us, and we're inside of that. And everywhere we go, they are positioned in different areas as we travel around this and the sun itself. So we're inside this light fixture. Just like this light is beaming on me, that would be Aquarius. One behind me would be uh, uh, Leo or all of these. So we're inside of these 12 light fixtures, and behind them, there are 12 or uh, 200 more. So we're getting all these refined forms of lights. These coming together and interfacing with one another constitute the light codes that hit us finally. Okay? And as the light is hitting us, we're breathing in the residuals of those light particles that are given off. And we're getting information messages. So, these proteins and these amino acids are micro chakras. And I'll explain all of that. All connected to the seven primary chakras. Each microprocessor amino has a code combination. Each has a three-letter code. So you can imagine now that the microprocessor aminos has a three-letter code. And we're going to get into the showing you how... Oh, you can just cut this part right off. A three-letter code. These are chemical codes used to articulate different combinations of carbon, melanin, hydrogen, melanin, oxygen, melanin, and nitrogen, melanin, the, that they collectively go into the constitution of aminos created to receive specific light code instructions. There are 20 known light code antenna processors presently identified by Western medical science. 20 known antenna that define the biocosmic temple we call the human body. The human genetic code is comprised of 64 possible code variations, what they call codons. Now, if you know anything about the ancient I Ching, what they call the ancient Chinese way of dealing with reading, I, and then it's called I and then C-H-I-N-G, there are 64 different combinations that you could throw of the coins that they give to you. Mm -hmm. And those 64 combinations of three are directly linked to how the code. So if you know how to do E King, mm -hmm. you can judge what is going on in the human condition based upon your sympathy with the energies of the planet. Mm -hmm. You can throw those E King coins four e -king coins or the three e -king coins, depending on what system you use, you can throw those e -king coins and read what's happening to you and interface because all 64 possibilities have a code next to them that our ancient ancestors wrote down. Okay? And they're linked to the so-called DNA. Now, the human genetic code is comprised of 64 possible code variations. It is these 64 variations that represent the limit or the wall of our perception for Western science. And this is this 64 code variations that I explained is to the Western science a complete mystery. There is nothing beyond it because the present perception of humanity and science cannot go beyond the 64 coded wall. It's like 64 bricks to this particular wall that they cannot see beyond. 
The mystery is that there are 64 possibilities, but only 20 light code antenna keys turned on and are in working order. So, <clears throat> if we know that there are only 20 possible variations within the chemical codes for aminos, and there are 64 possible code variations, it means that 44 code variations that would then link us up to a higher reality within ourselves are missing. Mm -hmm. Now, here's this man coming along to say that in the southern regions of Africa, below the equator, right now, at this point, there are evidences of people that are supposed to be primitive, primitive meaning first, but to them, primitive meaning idiotic and, and savage, but not understanding that these people hold on to the primary code keys that humanity had when they first fell out of spirit. If they found nine, understand that there are three that's only missing from them, and six missing from them. Because the, the first stages of being able to climb out of the present perceptual paradigm is to link up to the 12 DNA series. Mm. He only got to nine. Mm -hmm. And we're going to explain what that means. So here we have a, prob a problem with the amino sequence. Let's just use one amino acid, the amino acid leucine. L-E-U-C-I-N-E. -E. Now the amino acid leucine reveals something very deeply in us. I mean, it shows something that they have found out in us. And it shows something that we as metaphysicians have been trying to tell people for a long time, the occultists, the shamans have been telling people, we are locked down. We can't see beyond the present perception because we have refused to release it. Mm. And religion is that lock because it does not explain the spirit. It tells you to believe. But when you believe, it means that you have surrendered your critical thinking and your reasoning mind to accept something based upon what somebody else has said, not first-hand experience. Here's the problem. This society, Western society, is not based in first-hand experiences. Mm -hmm. Western society is based on vicarious experiences, which means we go to movies, TVs, we go to different uh, shows to see other people enjoy first-hand experiences with us. That's true. Mm -hmm. So a second-hand experience does not allow for certain parts of our bodies to develop. Mm. It does not allow for certain consciousness, uh, 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 cellular consciousness to be awakened. Because when you take away first-hand experience, you take away the soul's ability to interface with the moment on an organic level and thus traps the spirit or the soul in a paradigm always looking for itself, which is a first-hand experience with itself. Mm-hmm. So now you have a creature who is living completely by vicarious experiences. Okay, go to church, come to the preacher, the preacher will strike up the band, the band's music tells you sing these songs, these songs trigger a vicarious experience in you. You now, based on the programming, are told that Jesus is doing that to you, but you're doing it to yourself. Correct. And you've accepted the programming that somebody is doing this for you. I'm feeling Jesus because why? The preacher says that that feeling that you're feeling while you're in this place is Jesus. Mm -hmm. But you don't understand that he is using your own spirituality, your own, uh, 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 your own inheritance of the spirit. That's correct. That's correct. And spending your inheritance mm -hmm. by keeping you high on ignorance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So understand now that what I'm trying to say is that at this present time, the present amino acid structure that science is studying mm -hmm. is simply based upon a vehicle that is stuck in its own ignorance. Mm -hmm. As soon as you awaken this vehicle, this entity creature, 
all of these codes will change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the twinkling of an eye, didn't the Bible say? That's correct. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that if you keep the eyes blind mm -hmm. and the twinkle out of them. That's right. Yes. See? And the knowledge of oneself puts the twinkle back into one's eyes. Mm -hmm. But understand this. Now, the amino leucine looks like this. U, U, A. These are the these are the way that they are set up in sequence. U U A, U U G, and these are the way the proteins are set up. The protein aminos are set up. C U U C U C C U A and C U G. Now, if you're looking at it. We have six completely different chemical combinations, but they all still add up. These six different completely chemical combinations. These are six completely different chemical combinations for amino acids, but they all add up to leucine. Which means, and this is happening throughout the whole DNA helix, which means that humanity is stuck or locked down in a consciousness of redundancy. The consciousness redundancy that we are presently locked down in means that we can't see to the next phase of our development in the journey of life. Mm -hmm. And what has happened for the last 2,000 years is that a force has been placed upon us, has been imposed upon us. We have been forced into this reality to believe something that you don't understand. And you know what Stevie said. If you believe in things you don't understand, you suffer. Mm -hmm. Superstition ain't the way. And what is religion? But superstition. So it's our focus of attention to the church, to the politics, to the education system. Those are all the limbs of the Frankenstein monster. The more we give our children over to that, the more energy we give to the Frankenstein monster and then we turn around and wonder what's happening to our village. Mm -hmm. Because the children you send into that beast, into that laboratory they call the classroom, comes back as the Frankenstein monster. That's not your child anymore. It's being genetically changed, altered in consciousness. So the monster lives and the redundancy continues and you get another uh, uh, a newspaper where another brother is shot, another sister is raped, another child is abandoned. How much longer is this thing going to go on? As long as we continue to think in redundancy, this will see, this is continue to happen. And we have now become addicted to our own comfort. Miserable as we are, we still addicted to this semi-comfort that we call reality.